I'm Barb from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop, and today I want to talk about the Accolade. Now, this is our eight thread serger. Ooh, eight threads. Ooh. What do you need eight threads for? I uh, have no idea. <laughs> well, first of all, we're going to talk there's about... Only, there's only four things there. There's only four things there, but there's five needles down here. Get out. There's, there's three there in the covering chain, and there's two overlock needles. And you could sew with all five of them at once if you wanted. Oh my goodness. Not very goodness. often you're going to, but. You could. Let me show you, yeah, you could. Let me show you what we have going on here. This is our telescoping. This is where you want to have this all the way up because this is gonna affect the tension on the threads. And you have places for eight threads up there. So you've got your chain. You have to see that this is all yeah. rippled. So you don't nice. even have to say, oh, where do I put stuff? There's a lower looper, upper looper, overlock needle one, overlock, overlock needle one, overlock needle two, and there's chain one, two, and three. Oh my goodness. But I'm gonna show you how to thread this up. Okay. But first we're gonna talk about the knobs. Okay. All right, so you can see where all the threads go. And right over here, this is the chain and cover knob. When you're doing a cover stitch, it's gonna be right there. You can see how it tells you. Mm -hmm. And here is the chain. Different places to put that chain. What is, what is that telling me? That is going to be a wider, thicker, whatever you want that chain to be. And as you fiddle with it, you're going to know which one is going to be best for that project. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And right here, of course, is your uh, hand wheel. There's where you turn it on and off. That's good to know. It is good to know. <laughs> Sometimes I've had to search for those, and that's where it plugs in. All right, this little pl place right there, I'm going to show you how to do that. That one is a little, uh, it's hard to see from the pictures how you thread that, but I want to show you that one. Okay. This is your stitch selector, and this is to go with your overlock stitches. Then right down here, we have the differential feed. This is where it gathers it together. That mm -hmm. little picture has the arrows going in, and this is neutral. And down there is where it stretches it out. And that was primarily made so that when you're sewing on knits, if your knit is all wavy, then yeah. you can adjust it right there. Or if it's pulling too tight, you nice. know what to do. All right. Right here is where I put it into threading mode. And I turn my hand wheel. Okay, if I didn't put it in threading mode, would it suck that thread it in? It would not. Okay. It would not because it doesn't engage the pipes. You come over here and you're going to see those are going to be now engaged. You're turning that with the hand wheel. Yeah. I am. Wheel. I am. And that's oh. going to pop that into place. Now that we're over there, I want you to see. I got one pipe hanging out in Nowhere's Land right there. You see that one? Um, right there? See? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Now that's it's not, not broken. connected. It's not broken. <gasps> but let me show you why. I have my upper looper down. I'm going to put it up. Turn my hand wheel, it will engage that upper looper. Now when I put it in threading, now it's going to have somewhere to go. Oh, See that? yep, I did. Now it's there. I did. All right, so these are the ports where we're going to put our threads to throw thread our loopers. There's the chain, lower, and upper. And this is where we will thread them. Okay. This has got the motor on it. I love that motor. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the wave and overlock. So make sure if you're getting an ugly stitch and you want an overlock and you just have this ugly stitch coming, it might be because you bumped it into wave. Okay. So always check that one. Do you one. only use the wave when you're doing the wave stitch? That's right. Only when you're doing the wave stitch. Okay. Because it changes so how it threads. So always check where that is. Always check. And this right here is a subsidiary looper. I'm going to pull that. Is there a little spring on it? Gently. Pull it and it pops it into place. Okay. Okay. And, I and it'll tell you if you need to do that, right? It will. All right. This is putting that upper looper up or down. Now, when you're going into the cover and chain stitches, you'll always want that down. Okay. Always. And to get that to go down, then you put it in down, and then you turn your hand wheel and see how it locked into place? Same thing as when I want it up. I turn it up, turn my hand wheel, and then it brings it back up. And that same thing happens with when you lock the blade down. Right now I've got the blade locked down and right. it is down. If I want it up, it doesn't just pop up. I have to turn my hand well. Now it's going to engage. Oh, see that? There we go. Oh yeah. This right here is the tension for the loopers. And this is one I really don't change that much, but you can see on here that it's going to tell you when you're in the normal position. Okay. Then you can go tighter and looser. And I really don't mess with that one too much. Okay. Not hardly at all. I've never had a need to. All right. Uh, 
come back over here. I want you to see this is your lower looper. And there's your upper looper. Sometimes it's just nice to know what those things are doing. And right here is How your did chain somebody looper. figured this all out. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. It is. All right, so this is my large knob. This is my length. length. Oh, you're so quick, I, Kyle. I'm, I'm like a learning. genius. Yep. All right, so the numbers right here, those are my standard settings in my overlock stitches or my chain and cover. Those are the standard settings. And on the side of the dial, it will tell you standard. Oh, okay. Now, if I turn it and go into the rolled ham, it's got a circle around it. And it oh. also tells me on the side that that is going to be the rolled ham. Nice. Now, I want you to, let me pop that foot off. Now, if I'm going to pop my foot off, I just do that. Just get that little lever in the back and slide it to the left. Now, my foot up, foot down is in the back, right back here. And do that again. Right I missed back here. that. Okay. That's the foot up, foot down. Okay. This right here is a pressure foot pressure. Um, do you need to turn it? Well, yeah, but I really don't mess with that one much either. That's one of those that you can do if you need to. Okay. But this will sew from Levi to Silk without moving a thing. Okay. It's good you, to know. I just don't do much with it. This right here is a tension for the needles. And I usually keep it right about there. Okay. Uh, sometimes you might need to adjust that. I do want to show you down here when talking about the length and going into the rolled edge. Let me pop that out of my way. Okay. Right back here. You see that stitch finger? Yeah. It moves in and out. That's what creates the rolled edge or the overlocker oh, cover and stitch. yes. There it goes. See? Okay. When I put it in rolled edge, it moves that out of the way. When I'm not in rolled edge, it's going to stay in place. Oh, that's it what keeps it all out far. Yeah, that's what forms the stitch around. That's what those loopers can form around. Nice. I'm getting it. Okay. And over here on my differential feed, when I move it up and down, this had two sets of feed dogs. The back feed dogs are pretty standard. They're going to just be a continuous motion. They're not going to change very much. They just kind of go constantly mm -hmm. like that. But the upper feed, uh, the front feed dogs, they're the ones that can change around. Oh, and I've got it down in so the... So slight. Very oh. slight. But what it, it's going to function differently, having it down. So now it's in the stretching it see. out. I've got it at the bottom. Okay. I've got it at the bottom. Okay, come back over here so you can see so what it's, it's doing. So it's stretching it. So... Now let me move it to the gathering one. Comes you'll see almost what to happens. the front. Now it's coming, taking a bigger stitch, oh. and it's going back further. Okay. So that's what that differential feed does. Another thing that I wanted to show you is, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know, Kyle? Um, I don't know. I've learned so much. I, I know that there's something I want to I didn't to show want to you. say this. But I didn't know what differential feed did. Oh, I love the differential now feed. Now I know. Totally. While we're in here, let me show you this on the accolade. This door will open, which is really nice. And I, I've got some dust back in here. I've got my little brush out. And I just want to keep that. comes with it. It does. I just want to keep that dust cleaned out. But the nice thing about this one is you can kind of blow and it will go out that direction. Whoa. Okay. Normally, you don't want to use any air no. in your machines because it just compacts it down inside. This mm -hmm. one, I kind of have a little more leeway there, which okay, I kind of like. because the door is open. Yeah, the door is open. All right, let me show you another thing this machine has, which is really cool. And I'm going to tip this back so you can see a little better and so I can get it out. This has oh. a needle catcher. That's what nice. I call it. Nice. If the needle falls down inside, more often than not, it will fall right in this little spot. Oh. And so there you have it. You're not hunting all through I the machine. Not. And I don't have to worry that it's gotten inside the mechanics of it, because it's not. It's just going to go to that one little spot. Nice. All right, so I'm going to put my foot up, and I'm going to put my foot back on. So I raise the lever up, and when I put my foot on, I just want to pull that up a little bit. Boy, I can't see that with... <laughs> I'm in your way. Yeah. Oh, I need to raise my needles up. Sorry. That's what my problem was. Okay. And then just put it in there. Just kind of oh. wiggle it in and it goes back into place. And now it's ready to go. Okay. Do you have any questions, Kyle? Um, you said you cleaned that out. Do you clean all over on the machine? I, I really just, just clean that one little spot. And if I if I do have a machine that isn't working quite right, does it need to be serviced? 
It should be served about once a year because there's things up in here that they'll need to oil. Even if I don't use it? Even if you don't use it, because that'll coagulate. But right here, big words right here, do not oil. Don't put any water, don't lick your threads, don't put any oil in there, nothing. Because if you put, lick your threads, it's gonna get down, that moisture will get down inside those pipes and you don't want that. Okay, don't even lick your threads. No, don't you don't need to. Yeah, yeah. You just put them in there. You're not threading that through a needle. No, you're not. Perfect. That's awesome. I love it. Well, thank you.